I'm Ilana Horn, and I'm going to talk today about the landscape of good mathematics teaching. Um, I am a researcher, a university researcher. I think a lot about what it means to teach mathematics in our schools. So that's me, and these are some questions that I ask. I wonder what good math teaching is. I wonder how we get it to students. One of the things that sets my research apart is that I think a lot about what does it mean to make schools into places that support good mathematics teaching. So I look at things like what's the role of colleagues, what are the roles of, roles of community and the policy environment for supporting and creating resources for what teachers actually can do instructionally. And that's what I mean by the landscape of good math teaching. So let's take a little tour here. One of the features on our landscape right now is this highly qualified teacher clause in No Child Left Behind. It emphasizes certification and qualification. But it leaves a lot open. It doesn't really tell teachers what they should be doing in their classroom. It just says that they're going to be assessed on it. We don't know what classroom instruction looks like. It stays agnostic on the details. And that matters because it leaves a lot of questions open. So we can turn to our professional organizations like NCTM, and we can get a definition of good teaching. And if you look at that definition, you can see things like understanding. Students' understanding should be the basis for instruction. Teachers should know how to support the development of that understanding. Meanwhile, elsewhere on the landscape, we see 49 techniques of expert teachers being touted. Technique 13 is particularly upsetting to me because it seems to be going against what NCTM is wanting in the way of understanding. But this is a kind of pedagogy that we all know in schools. It's what's known as direct instruction, where a teacher's main job is to cover the curriculum, to effectively present ideas, to make sure that they get the right answers out there and keep students passive as recipients of knowledge. Now, this makes sense when you think of the origins of these 49 practices because they were based on value-added modeling based on test scores, which teachers did the best in value-added measures, and this is what Doug Lamov found, those 49 techniques. If we take a little bit more of a tour on the landscape, we see the National Board of Professional Teaching Standards. This vision of teaching looks a lot more like what NCTM is after. There is evidence of wanting to know what students understand. There's a need for content knowledge. This is aimed at inquiry instruction, or what we might call that. And the goal of this kind of teaching is to develop important mathematical ideas. It's important to understand what students are thinking and use that as a basis of instruction. That the origins of that kind of teaching is looking at what practicing mathematicians and scientists do and trying to think hard about what it would mean to design classrooms that would reflect that kind of thinking and those kinds of practices. But here's the rub. What landmarks are teachers using? Do we see direct instruction or do we see inquiry instruction when we go around to classrooms? In this room here, we see a, hear a lot of passionate rise, raising up the rallying for inquiry instruction. But if we look across large data sets, we see that direct instruction is becoming more prevalent. Teach Like a Champion is selling like hotcakes in urban school districts. National board teachers teach elite and privileged children. So what do we say? Maybe we just can't teach those kids. Maybe they really just can't handle that kind of instruction. I am here to say that 20 years of educational research has proved that wrong time and time again that all kids learn better when they have a chance to make sense of ideas. But what's going on in schools? Why do teachers keep regressing back to direct instruction? They've got a tight bell schedule, crowded classrooms, lots of paperwork, and a lot of accountability pressure. So if that's the environment, maybe direct instruction is more efficient. Maybe that's what satisfies school leaders and principals. Maybe it's what kids expect. So what are we going to do? That's my challenge to you today. What would schools look like that support inquiry teaching for all kids? What do we need to do? Someone said this is an easy change. I say it's really, really hard. And I'm going to challenge you to think today about what do we need to do to manage the institutional pressures on teachers who are aiming for richer forms of practice? How do we block off those pressures and really support teachers in developing good practice for all kids. So I'm going to leave you with that, and I'm going to thank you for listening, and I'm welcome to, I, I would really welcome hearing some of your ideas. Thanks a lot.